Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, colleagues. Welcome to today's Knowledge Cafe, um, which is on the integration of the SDGs, International Development Plans and Budgets, looking at the case of Ghana. We're very happy to have everyone today, wherever you are in the world. Um, also very happy to say that we have simultaneous French translation today. So if you'd like to listen to the session in French, please look at your lower tab in Zoom where you see the logo for interpretation or the icon for interpretation, and you can access the French translation through that logo. I'm Maricar Garde, people call me Rika, and I'm a program manager in UNICEF looking after country program development. I support the Integrated Policy Practitioners Network together with colleagues from UNDP, ILO, FAO, UNFPA, and other UN agencies. I would like to say a special thank you to the colleagues from UNDP who are working behind the scenes to manage this Knowledge Cafe. Without them, it will be extremely difficult to, to run um, today's session. Um, just to remind everybody, the IPPN brings together development practitioners from across the UN, um, government development partners, civil society, academia, and beyond to address multidimensional development challenges and accelerate progress across the 2030 agenda. IPPN aims to link existing efforts on SDG integration um, across UN agencies and beyond and, enab and enabling cross-pollination and learning to enhance the UN system-wide capability to practice and deliver high quality integrated policy support. We're very excited for today's Knowledge Cafe. Um, if you have been following the network, today is our fourth Knowledge Cafe since the IPPN was launched in November, 2021. It marks a milestone for us because for the first time we are focusing um, in a country experience in the Knowledge Cafe. And we're very lucky to have with us today our partners and colleagues from the government of Ghana. Um, in this Knowledge Cafe, Policymakers from Ghana will share their experience in mainstreaming and localizing the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. The government of Ghana has integrated the SDGs in its national medium-term development policy framework, um, 2022 to 2025, down to the SDG indicator level. Furthermore, its budget um, objectives were aligned with SDG targets at national and subnational levels. Guidance from the National Development Planning Commission requires sectoral ministries as well as local authorities to align their activities with the SDGs. The Ministry of Finance has also developed an SDG budgeting manual and regularly publishes SDG budget reports that provide an overview of SDG investments. So really looking forward to hearing from, our, from the team today. Um, just as a reminder, in terms of the flow of the session, um, we will have presentations by the speakers from Ghana, followed by reactions from the floor, and then um, interactive discussions with our participants today. We try to keep it to an hour. Um, we encourage all participants to use the chat feature to post questions or comments during the presentation. Please keep yourself muted unless you are called to speak on the floor. Um, again, simultaneous um, interpretation in French is available. Please look for the interpretation icon on the lower tab of Zoom so you can access um, the interpretation. You can choose to listen in English or in French. So without further ado, let me introduce our two speakers today that we're very lucky to have. Um, first, we have Ms. Pa Patience Ampoma, who is a planning analyst at the National Development Planning Commission in Ghana. And she will be joined by Mr. Nana Yao Minta Botwe, who is the head of budget, technical assistance, and support at the Ministry of Finance in Ghana. So I will hand over to Patience now to start the presentation. Patience, please come in. Can you assume that you hear me? Yes, it works. Yes. Thanks. Okay. So thank you very much for having us uh, for this uh, program. 
And as she rightly mentioned, I'm patients with the National Development Planning Commission and um, our main role with the SDG is to coordinate the SDG uh, implementation and um, also reporting uh, in, a, in a coordinated manner for the country. So my assignment is briefly to walk us through uh, what the country has done so far when it comes to the implementation uh, of the SDG alignment of the SDG, um, the present program uh, for the BNR process. Um, if there's time, we'll walk you through that one. And then the budgeting process, which um, um, Mr. Minta will take us through next. So uh, with regards to, next please. On, with regards to the SDG, next. With regards to the SDG implementation, uh, there is this um, uh, arrangement that Ghana actually put in place, which is uh, an enviable architecture for the country. Uh, so learning from the MDGs, learning from the MDGs, uh, which was implemented somehow in a coordinated manner, uh, we thought it wise to this time around strengthening, strengthen the coordination uh, for the implementation of the SDGs. So as, as the country learned a lot with regards to making so much input into the SDGs, uh, we thought it wise to institutionalize a particular architecture so that we know who is actually responsible for the SDG implementation, who is responsible when it comes to coordinating uh, the reporting and even sharing experiences uh, on, in that process. So that this on the slide is our architecture, which has been institutionalized. So first, uh, we know our, um, our president is a co-chair uh, of, you know, eminent advocates for the SDGs. Uh, so um, there is a need for us to actually project his work uh, when it comes to his role. And uh, secondly, as we, as we signed on to the SDG, and not just that one, to other, uh, you know, um, international commitments, the, there is also the need from the presidency, uh, a number of high level um, uh, or ministers you, who we group into a high level ministerial committee to also take the advisory role when it comes to uh, providing this, uh, you know, direct advice with regards to se the sectors that they actually represent. And then we also have the implementation coordinating committee uh, that has the role of coordinating the day-to-day -day affairs when it comes to the, the drivers for the implementation of the SDG. So the drivers I will explain uh, when it comes to data, when it comes to uh, the people, which is uh, stakeholders, uh, when it comes to financing, uh, when it comes to reporting and so on and so forth. So this implementation coordinating committee in short ICC uh, is actually responsible, responsible for that. Um, for uh, the country Ghana, we actually uh, in, we actually use the decentralized planning system uh, when it comes to planning um, our development planning and you know preparing our plans from the national level and driving down to the sub-national level. So we ensure that the architecture also have in place uh, the sub-national leg uh, for the whole process. So NDPC is here, but we coordinate. Uh, we actually uh, are the helm of affairs when it comes to the implementation coordinating committee. And then um, we also have the technical committee. So that also encompasses uh, the sub-national level, which has a number or all our ministries, our departments and agencies uh, that are also uh, responsible for providing data or even implementation of the SDGs and also our uh, direct sub-national level, uh, which is the Metropolitan Municipal and District Assemblies, in short, uh, MMDAs, which also, just like the MDAs, also provide us uh, when it comes to the implementation of the SDGs. We've also not left the CSOs or other stakeholders, uh, you know, isolated uh, with regards to the process of implementation or coordinating the SDGs. So, on our right wing, we have um, our CSOs. So uh, this time around, we've been able to coordinate them in a particular platform, which we call the CSO platform, you know, uh, ensuring that all CSOs that are responsive uh, for the specific SDGs are actually on board. 
uh, we also have the philanthropy uh, platform. A lot of things are going on uh, in that in that platform. So that, but there was a need for us to also coordinate uh, that arrangement so that at the end of the day they can be able to provide us uh, in a coordinated manner what they are doing uh, when it comes to adhering to the SDGs. So civil society are not also alone. We have the private sector. Uh, we also have our traditional authorities, our development partners are also on board with, with regards to this uh, uh, arrangement, uh, faith-based organizations and academia, um, youth. Uh, the youth is also organized in a way uh, that somehow find themselves under the CSO uh, platform. So this in a nutshell is the implementation architecture for the SDGs and also for the agenda 2063. Next. Um, so in 2016, um, there was a need for Ghana to ensure uh, with its position when it comes to even adopting, whether we adopt, whether we align uh, or adapt uh, the, the goals and some of the, um, the indicators. So we actually needed to, uh, to perform an assessment to ensure our readiness in terms of um, how far we can go in, in taking on the SDGs and its uh, related indicators. So before we even started implementation, um, there was a need for an assessment to be conducted. So uh, NDPC in collaboration with Ghana Statistical Service uh, conducted a brief assessment on the level of convergence uh, of the SDGs in, in our context. And uh, we realized that uh, for 60% of uh, the SDGs, they were already uh, situated in our existing plan. So at that time, we were implementing the agenda for jobs uh, which was 2017 to 2018. So 2017, uh, we were, were, they were like 60% already uh, aligned or con convergence with the SDGs. And um, uh, co convergence in the sense that uh, we realized that number one, um, a lot of our strategies and objectives were in line with the SDGs. And then secondly, when it comes to data, uh, we, we, we also realized that 60%, about 60% of the information that we, can, we could provide for reports on the SDGs were actually hampered on um, survey data. Another aspect of the assessment also revealed that uh, 40%, so if 60% will be furnished by survey, then that means 40% is administrative. So it actually positioned us uh, when it comes to how we were going to do or which way we're going to go about when it comes to reporting. And that also um, going forward uh, for our subsequent uh, plans uh, ensured the selection of our goals and also of our indicators. So we use the 3A approach uh, in selecting um, the goals and its indicators. So the level of convergence and those that, you know, we could identify with the targets and the indicators, we just adapted to it. And those uh, that, uh, you know, we could adopt, we, we did that uh, as, as such. So for survey, those that were related to survey, we knew that in five years, uh, we will be having the indicators uh, values. And those that for the 40%, we had to work hard when it comes to churning out the data from administrative source. Next, please. So that also helped us. And then another leg of um, our alignment um, also had to do with aligning our, our goals to our, um, to our thematic areas when it comes to our development agenda. So presently, uh, we, are, we, are, we are actually about to outdoor a new uh, development agenda, we start from 2022 to 2025. So in this agenda, it has dimensions, which we ensure that uh, there's some level of alignment with the SDGs into the various uh, development dimensions that uh, we, we as a country are working with. So this is an example of some of our development uh, dimensions and it's uh, how they are related to the goal. So it's, that way helps us also in uh, aligning uh, these 
dimensions uh, and its related goals to the strategies that we choose for the various dimensions and also uh, for the indicators that we also churn out nationally and those that are specific to the SDGs, we also ensure that uh, we put them in that uh, in that arrangement so that it can be very easy for us uh, when it comes to reporting. Next, please. So the same way um, for our specific um, uh, uh, activities or flagship, I would say, uh, we also ensure that they are also aligned. So um, presently in the country, there are a number of flagship projects that we are implementing, about 16 of them. And um, in order for us to know how far we're going, um, we've ensured that they are also aligned to the SDGs, those that can be aligned there. And then uh, we address the synergies that uh, synergies across these uh, goals, uh, those that we need to efficiently implement. Um, we also do that so that uh, we are efficient with the use of our resources. I think from here, and Minta will take us through um, the financing uh, opportunities that uh, we've also put in place uh, with regards to our budgeting so that I'll, I'll, I'll complete the presentation. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so just to continue with what from where you left off, um, the chart of account, which is a listing of all the codes uh, an entity uses in the creation of their budget, has been our backbone in our alignment of um, resources, or allocation of resources to the various SDGs. Um, the chart of account as designed in the case of Ghana uh, tends to respond to some legal requirements and then has some uh, space to meet some future and current uh, business needs and also respond to some international requirements as well. Uh, in, the la in line with the allocation of resources, um, we um, start off with the plans. In this regard, we pick the plans as designed and as prepared and approved by our, um, um, the planning commission. What we try to do in the chart of account is try to now make sure that we're able to link the various national policies that we have within the plan so that we are able to track the various allocations in line with our SDG targets. We are, we are doing this on the back, uh, from the back of a, a recommendation that we had from the preparation of the baseline report. In the preparation of the baseline report, we noticed that it was very difficult to now try to do um, a, a reconciliation of the resources allocated uh, from the budget to some of the various activities, and then also try to monitor them as part of the implementation of the budget as well. So what we did in was now we link the SDG to the various policy objectives, and then we try to ensure a one-to-one -one relationship with the various uh, policies that we have, where we don't have some of this cutting across, then we are trying to go into assigning weights and uh, other areas, which might be very difficult to actually put in a good measure. So from there on, we now incorporated this into our main chart of account. In Ghana's case, we the chart of account that is used at the national and subnational levels are same, which means that by this new um, alignment, we are now able to allocate resources at the national levels to our SDG various SDG targets, and then also at the subnational levels to SDG targets targets as well. Now, by this, we are able to do um, a fair comparison, be able to identify the, the various focus or the areas of allocations by the various uh, ministries and the other subnational or what we refer to as the various metros, municipal districts as well. Next, please. So this is an example of how our chart of account has been structured uh, to be able to respond to uh, some legal requirements. So in line with what a uh, patient mentioned earlier on, we still have to prepare reports based on our national policies and plans as well. So by this, uh, from what we see from the key focus area, we have what we refer to as the, our national policy objectives. The last level is the SDG targets. So this has been linked as we have yet the strong and resilient economy then we have our national policy as the ensure improved fiscal performance and sustainability. Then we have this link to an SDG target, which is 
strengthen domestic resource mobilization. Here, this is not the full description as we have. Um, the current financial systems that we are working with has a character restriction to about 80 characters. As such, we had to trim some of these descriptions to just about 80 characters. But this is how this is actually feeding into our current uh, financial systems. And then this is how uh, the various uh, um, national entities and the sub entities will now allocate resources. And by this, we're able to report on the uh, national plans and also the SDG targets as well. So um, with this, next. So with this uh, incorporated into our uh, chart of account, this means that as I mentioned earlier, we are able to track uh, um, the various resources that we allocate uh, from all levels of government. And then we are able to identify synergies, priorities, how uh, the focus and then how um, the focus within uh, some of the metro, some of the districts are changing and how they all uh, seem to allocate resources in this in line with our various policies and the SDG targets as well. So we have this, been able to produce um, uh, two reports, uh, the 2019 SDG budget report, the SDG 2020 report, and then we are yet to publish that of the 2021. Uh, we, we are also looking to publishing one which actually gives um, um, uh, further insights into um, the how the status of implementation in, in 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 area of the budget implementation as well. So um, this has been done, and all the financial systems actually have this kind of information sitting on them and can be analyzed for decision making by management as well. Um, patient, I think you come in now um, from here. Okay, so quickly. Um... Thank you very much, Minta. So, um, so like he rightly said, it is well situated, uh, even in the budgeting process, you know, all the coding and all that, in order to ensure that we don't miss any objective or strategy uh, for the implementation of the um, SDGs. So here, um, the continuation of the architecture has actually birthed uh, a number of uh, outputs. So we've ensured number one, uh, when it comes to the SDGs uh, and our coordinated program of economic and social development policies, which is a policy that the president is expected to uh, uh, bring out within two years uh, into his office. So it's more like a visionary document. And uh, ever since, uh, the, since the inception of the uh, SDGs, uh, our present uh, president of the country has ensured that this document is also aligned uh, when it comes to our medium term policy uh, development framework, which I mentioned earlier on, all these are aligned. Um, our results matrix for monitoring and evaluation is also aligned. Our plans, national and sub national level, is aligned in addition to our budget. Next. Next, please. So uh, the approach is simple. In a nutshell, all we're saying is the implementation of the SDG. Uh, actually takes a whole society and a whole government approach as I, as I showed us in the schematic diagram. So we have the government institution taking it place. And we have the society, which includes uh, civil society, uh, uh, other group, private sector, everyone is actually on board. And we have been very intentional about using this approach. It's also, uh, we also ensure that uh, the decentralized planning system is well uh, in use uh, when it comes to the SDG. Uh, I've also mentioned the three-tier uh, coordinating structure, which is the high-level ministerial uh, implementation coordinating committee and then the technical committee that is actually still being used in the country. Uh, so next. Um, some of the deliverables as have already been mentioned when it comes to our budget uh, statements, which is read every year. There's actually a portion that talks about how much has been uh, implemented in terms of the quantum um, of amount that has been dispersed uh, in our budget statements. Uh, these are mentioned. Uh, we, we have an SDG indicator baseline reports, which is the first report that uh, was published in 2018. Uh, since then, we've been publishing uh, progress reports. Uh, we've also done a VNR in 2019, and we are actually in the process of 
developing the second BNR report. The process has started, consultation and all that uh, is underway. And when it comes to voluntary local review, we also uh, supported uh, one of our, uh, uh, our bigger city, uh, that is Accra, to also prepare its voluntary local review in 2020. Next. So um, these are some of our uh, best practices. Our multi-stakeholder partnership, uh, it's something that we, it's an enviable uh, uh, approach and it has yielded a lot of results uh, for us. Uh, SDG coordination arrangements is also uh, very good. I mean, there are issues when it comes to uh, its challenges and all that, but uh, the good thing that we can share with uh, the other countries is that uh, we have been very focused in using this particular approach. Uh, integration of our SDGs into our various uh, plans and budgeting process is also uh, something, a very good practice that uh, Ghana is using, SDG budget tracking tool that Minta talked about. And also another enviable practice that uh, we, we, we can also share with you is our data quality assurance framework. Uh, because of the larger number of or percentage of our administrative data that we need from our technical committee, there's a need for us to bring out a particular framework so that uh, the data that is Chained out can respond to the metadata for the SDGs. So uh, this, in, in a nutshell, is what Ghana um, we we can share to you. Uh, thank you very much, and over to you, Margarita. Thank you very much to our colleagues from Ghana. Thank you, patients, um, um, and thank you, Mr. Minta, for the detailed presentation. Um, so. For those colleagues who joined in a little bit later or in the middle of the, of the presentation, my name is uh, Rika Garde. I'm from UNICEF. Um, we're organizing this Knowledge Cafe with, together with UNDP today and um, other agencies from the IPPN. I would like to remind everyone that there is um, French translation. So if you look into the lower toolbar, um, you would see the icon for translation. So if you would like to listen to, in, to the French translation, you can access it through that icon. So without um, further ado, I would like to now give the floor to three of our colleagues who will be, um, who will be giving reactions today. Um, the first, our first colleague is Mr. Frederick Mogisha, who is the SDG, uh, SDG integration advisor um, in Africa for UNDP. Um, Mogisha, if you'd like to come in. Yes, please. <laughs> Thank you very much. So uh, colleagues, I have three points that I wanted to emphasize. Uh, one is to thank Ghana and uh, there are actually seven other countries that have integrated the SDGs in their development plans at the granular level. But what they have also been able to do is to give us a, 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 a simple technique, a practical one, that we can integrate multiple development frameworks. Like you see, it is one development plan, one budget, one statistical system, but you can see that actually we could practically include the SDGs, the African Union, and the regional uh, RICS agendas without a uh, necessary compromising. So it solves one pain, one painful experience that member states face in terms of integrating multiple commitments. Uh, the second uh, comment I would like to say is that it is actually, as you can see, it's actually member states that integrate uh, the, the commitments, not the other way around. So the primary becomes the development priorities of the country, uh, but then the others can be integrated. And then finally, uh, I think we, we can say that uh, if we can organize ourselves a little bit so that through some kind of mentorship program, we can be able to get these colleagues from Ghana and other colleagues into our countries uh, then uh, we can be actually able to help many more countries than uh, doing it uh, singularly. 
So thank you very much, Ghana, and thank you very much, uh, colleagues, for coming and for the organizers. Over to you. Thank you, Mugisha. Um, at this point, I'd like to call on Mr. Charles Konglo, who is a development planner from the National Development um, Planning Commission in Ghana. Um, Charles, if you'd like to come in. So, uh, I think a lot of experiences have been shared. Uh, um, uh, Charles, it's a little bit broken. Maybe you can switch off the video um, to, okay. to, to improve the sound. Sorry about that. Okay, I, hope, I hope I'm clear now. Yes, this is good. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, hello to everyone. And uh, I think a lot of experiences have been shared already. The, from my side, I think we need to as much as possible sustain this uh, very significant progress that has been made in the light of current uh, circumstances and with the impact of COVID and other issues at a global level that is coming into the equation. So going forward, I think this is where effort needs to be put so that we don't, we don't fall back and ultimately we ensure that we can achieve the target we set for ourselves. Uh, I think for now, that's what I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Charles. And then to the last re um, reaction from the floor before we open up to the Q&A is from Mr. Nana Yo uh, Mark Yanka, who is the Principal Economic Officer from the Ministry of Finance in Ghana. Hello, everyone. Um, good afternoon. Um, I just want to speak on um, very, um, two very quick things. Um, <clears throat> my colleagues have shared um, enough on what Ghana is doing, and I thought that I would add two more things to it, i.e. our country financing framework that we've developed. Um, within this um, decade of action, we are looking to identify the, the resource need to really implement the SDGs. And so we've come up with a country financing roadmap that determines the gaps in financing that is required. Um, the report, can, I can share the report with um, with delegates if, if need be. Um, also as part of financing the SDGs, SDGs and trying to um, try to build businesses and startups, we also organize what we call the SDG investment, uh, investment fair that brings together um, investors and um, um, businesses that are looking for financing. And we've done that for three years. Um, the fourth is, is scheduled to happen this August. And uh, so these, these are two other things that I wanted to, to share. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's very, very interesting and um, very informative, um, very informative um, comments from the floor. So moving forward, we're now in the Q&A part of our session. We do have about, we have 25 minutes left. So let's say 20 minutes for the Q&A before we wrap up. Um, you will see that there are some reflection questions posted here on the on the screen for um, for our um, you know our panelists today. We also have some questions that are um, already posted in the chat. So because we have these questions, um, I can read um, I can read the first one and um, uh, give it back to the panelists. Um, so there is a question. Um, from Won Jubeit, um, very interesting and great convergence of SDG targets into planning. Ideally, data at district level should feed into regional program, then international program progress, including SDG progress. Have all these processes been automated? Would like to know the progress and prospect as well as challenges, if any. So I, uh, I throw that to the Ghana team, um, if anyone would like to come in and um, provide some, some reflection on that, on that question. Okay, um, I think I take um, the first one, the, the tools and methodologies. Um, so um, in line with uh, our budget uh, allocation and implementation, we have uh, some financial tools and some models which are able to extract data for analysis and the preparation of dashboards and then some financial reports also. So the plans and the policies as uh, approved um, 
are now putting out out of accounts a segment which contains that and uh, it's made available in the budget system so as you prepare the budget you allocate your resources in line with our national policies and then also uh, the SDG targets as well we have uh, developed a methodology for this which um, I, I see has been shared by Nadine in the, in the chat which you can actually make reference to from here and um, I would I would want to answer a question too with patients uh, in here but just to start off uh, prioritization um, uh, during the for the budget process um, the, the, it's very consultative and an iterative process where stakeholders are engaged in uh, what they might what their priorities are and how they might want to allocate resources in this regard also by this uh, by and by their mandate their core mandate as an institution some of the functions or the some of the areas that they might want to go into are already identified and this have, from our methodology some of these areas have been linked to our national policies and plans already so from there on it becomes easier to be able to now approach some of these uh, targets which have been outlined uh, uh, in the, the SD document and then also in national plans as well. Um, it, uh, yes, the stakeholders, all stakeholders are involved. Then as I mentioned, it's an iterative process also where you have to engage. And if you don't engage extensively, you definitely might miss out on some key areas that you might have to also focus on as well. Um, my patients, uh, would you want to come in? Yes, um, so with regards to the stakeholders, um, I mean, we know that it's, it's, it's actually costly if uh, we have to bring everyone on board. Uh, we have to be frank with that, uh, even as a nation. But um, we keep learning from uh, the process, that's like he, he mentioned is iterative. We keep learning from the process uh, with our reporting and monitoring. So I can say that particularly with our first uh, VNR, uh, we conducted a, a mini assessment on uh, leave no one behind. And um, the assessment actually revealed that when it comes to the question of uh, those that have been left behind and how far these people or the degree to which they have been left behind, all these things were not really addressed so that we don't casually um, uh, discuss and leave no one behind by just talking about PWDs. But even with PWDs, uh, there's a, that's a person with, living with disability. There's a need to really diagnose uh, this particular group and any other group uh, that may be left behind. So uh, since that uh, the, um, assessment, uh, we have also been very conscious about uh, the various groups that uh, we haven't been actually reaching out to. So presently with uh, uh, this second VNR, um, when it comes to those that uh, were not brought on board previously, when it comes to uh, awareness creation, we, we have been very intentional about that, expanding the base. So it's expanding the base for various groups uh, at, at all levels. We may not be able to do the 100%, um, but when it comes to our stakeholder uh, prioritization for the planning process, that one too has also been very intentional since it is a decentralized uh, process that we implement uh, um, uh, our MMDAs, that is our district level, uh, has a, a unique structure that brings um, a lot of people uh, within the grassroots uh, together when it comes to planning. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so at this point, I would encourage the audience to, um, or our guests to reflect on the questions that we have here on up on the slide. And you might want from the experience of, of where you are from in your country, you might want to share that with us. So just kind of think about that for for a few minutes while I, I, I um, read another question from the floor to the panel members. Um, in Ghana, and and while they answer that, if after that, if somebody wants to come in with their own reflection on any of these questions, that would be great. Um, another question from Etienne de Souza: How do you ensure the implementation of the interventions at sub-regional level within the perspective of the one plan, one budget 
how do you um, how do you make sure that these interventions um, are implemented um, at the subnational or sub you know be beyond the national level? Um, anyone okay. from from the Ghana team? Any reflections? Okay, so I'll I'll take that. Um, Thank you. So um, when it comes to the subnational uh, level. There are, there are several several channels of reporting uh, in line with um, what you've discussed this uh, this far. So um, we we have uh, put in several uh, means of uh, measuring performances, and then uh, by this and by our peer our PFM Act, there are certain reports that you are mandated actually to also prepare in line with the implementation of your budget as well. So by this, um, there is one level higher or a mid-level between the, um, the, the, the sub-national and the national, which have a direct oversight, what we refer to as the regional coordinating councils, which have oversight over the various districts uh, in their uh, area, where they, they provide the monthly report as to how uh, how they are doing with the various plans and then uh, plans that they are actually implementing as well. By this, we uh, we have we we get to uh, understand the challenges that they might be having with some of the uh, priority areas that they have actually allocated resources to, and we are also able to provide uh, them with um, um, uh, solutions uh, if need be. And there's always support uh, from the national, the sub-national in the area of capacity building in the implementation of their budgets as well. I would also want to add um, to the, um, try to approach the fourth or add, uh, uh, respond to the fourth uh, question here, which says that for the country that are thinking about doing this, what uh, would be the most, uh, uh, single most important advice have have um, have a very good plan, and your plan, as mentioned by patients, should have linkages to some of these um, um, uh, areas uh, as well. Now, um, it, it's not for our plan. It's not just the SDGs only. We have the AU the AU agenda also linked to our plans as well. So we, these linkages should be established within the plan before. You start approaching this, and the budget is uh, the plan is the base becomes the single base for which uh, your your budget is prepared. So you need to have the linkage from the plan, then you can build up from there as well. And I think maybe patients or Charles might might want to add onto that from here as well. Thank you. Okay, so to add a bit to what Minta has said. Uh, Ensuring plan implementation also ties in with the structure that patient talked about. So as a country, we have a planning system which has mainly three main uh, three main levels. So and this also translates in the report that I generated and the supervision that is given to ensure that the plans are implemented. So at the national level, we have the NDPC and most of the uh, ministries, department agencies that provide that guidance to the district assemblies, which is normally referred to as the sub-national. And they supervise them and ensure that what monies has been allocated for them to implement, they actually do those implementation. And this is done periodically. At the middle level, what has been put in there to also to ensure this process works well is what we call the regional coordinating councils, which has a technical unit of expert, experts who, are, who form a team or the regional planning coordinating units. Their direct function is to supervise the subnational at the at the grassroots to ensure that one, they are implementing what they said they were going to implement, and two, they are using the money judiciously. And all these reports are fed back into a national report prepared at the NDPC and tabled for discussion between NDPC, Ministry of Finance, and most of the uh, key management agencies, as well as the presidency. So these 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 are some of the strategies in addition to what Brother Min has discussed. Uh, all ensure that uh, some some significant implementation is with the data. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, colleagues from Ghana, for for that response. Um, moving forward, I would um, there is a, we have a question from um, Joshua Gimba. So Joshua is one of the co-organizers of the IPPN. Um, Joshua, would you like to to take the floor? I, I'm happy to read your questions, but if you'd like to take the floor, please um, switch on your video and um, say your question. Okay, maybe there is um, maybe there is a lack. I can read the question from from Joshua. Um, so, for to the Ghana team, um, what are the some capacity gaps the government of Ghana faces in development planning and coordination at both the national and subnational levels? So, uh, uh, I will start and patience to finish. So, these are some of the. Uh, challenges or the gaps. So one has got to do with uh, sustaining continuous capacity at the local level. Uh, once uh, the officers get the needed experience, most of them move on. And you have new officers who fill in their shoes. And these new officers also need that, that, that capacity needs to be transferred. So uh, that is all and because of constraints with funding and all that, continuous training becomes a problem. So that is one challenge for development planning country where we're trying to resolve. But another key issue is about data uh, accuracy in the right dis disaggregation uh, for, for planning. So, you know, collecting data is quite expensive. And without data, we can do effective planning. So this is also one issue which, of course, working with GSS and other stakeholders, it's a continuous work that is going on to ensure that we can resolve that. The, the other uh, challenge has got to do with uh, multiple uh, temp, uh, report requirements at the subnational level. So because uh, this assemblies are planning units themselves, they deal with so many partners because there are a lot of development issues at the local level. So how to satisfy the reporting requirements for all these, because all partners or all interested partners will have particular ways of reporting. With, with, that goes with uh, various templates. And these are issues that also needs to be addressed. Now, the last one I'll talk about before patients come in, are also capacity for emerging development issues. You know, I think there, there was a time we considered climate change to be a emerging issue. I think now, beyond climate change, we have issues about risk informed planning, we have emergency, we have issues about uh, building back better. These are emerging things that needs the, the, the right capacity at all the various subnational levels to ensure that uh, we can achieve national objectives. So these are some of the key areas Generally, the Commission, Minister of Finance, key agencies are working to resolve so that we can we can accelerate our achievement of national objectives. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I think uh, Charles, you have said it all, but um, let me just add one one bit to it. Um, the the part of the whole society approach uh, that we we have been using or implementing, or ensuring some kind of conformity when it comes to reporting or implementation of the SDG. Um, the, the roles of our stakeholders, uh, you know, besides um, benefiting from the SDGs uh, by some of our stakeholders, uh, there's a need for us to keep drumming uh, down We, yeah. we lost your patience. Uh, and it, oh, there, you're back. Okay, so some uh, some rules, uh, there are rules towards the implementation of the SDG, and I think uh, that has in. Oops, you we lost you again. Directly a way of affecting. It. Okay, you're you're okay. Come in. Okay, so uh, part of the SDG when it comes to reporting, uh, in. Uh,
Okay, sorry, it's breaking up for me. Um, patients uh, specific are specific groups. There. So, for example, is it better? Okay, it, it, it you are. It's like it's okay, but you're breaking up. Can you try again? Okay, so quickly, quickly, I'll say that um, uh, identifying the the roles. Uh, of our various stakeholders towards the implementation of the SDG has, has been a little uh, um, issue which we need to forge ahead. Besides benefiting, some stakeholders benefiting from the SDG, uh, there's, there's a need for them to also uh, identify their roles and be responsible towards that. So that is, is something that uh, we are also working towards. So for example, like I was saying, uh, we have a very a big youth group, um, but when it comes to, you know, awareness creation is 100% uh, for them, but how do they also support the implementation of the SDG? It's something that uh, we're trying to grapple with and, and, and support some of our stakeholders to also uh, come along with that. And that can also help with our reporting because at their level, when they are well organized, they can even uh, report on what they are doing and even uh, feed into the whole architecture. That is the implementation committee. And it's very easy for what is actually to feed forth. So though it's very impressive, but uh, it's something that I believe is an issue that uh, we are actually working towards so that we can get uh, some of these stakeholders on board to also identify their rules and for even for them to tell us what they are doing in their own respect uh, for the SDG implementation. Thank you. Thanks, patience. And then great, the internet came through the, the last minute. Um, any, um, being mindful of the time, are there any reflections from the audience? Maybe I can take one on any of the questions posted here on the slide. Um, you can raise your hand. You can perhaps have one or two minutes. Um, if anybody from the audience would like to reflect on any of this, you know, maybe one of these questions. If there is no one, um, I will I will read another question um, from the floor. Um, by the way, just to the Ghana team, if you haven't seen the chat, there are lots of shout outs. There are lots of appreciation for your team and what you have been doing so far in integrating the SDGs into your, um, to your national planning, national agenda. Um, let me read another, another question. Um, this is from, from Catherine Buis. Um, thank you, Ghana team, for this informative presentation. Are this localized SDG indicators and how does your MTDP, so the Medium Term Development Plan, um, how does it deal with data gaps for any of these indicators? Anyone from, um, from the Ghana team? I, I, I missed the reading, but I think, yeah, I think it was a question whether we we have um, other kind of indicators, not necessarily uh, the proxy or localized indicators. Yeah, so they're Am asking right? if these are localized. These are localized SDG indicators, and how do you, how does yes. your plan okay. deal with with data gaps? So, so let me let me start. Uh, yes, so they are localized. Okay. Uh, they are localized SDG indicators, and that is the slide past spoke about on the triple E. So you have uh, adoption, alignment, adoption, and adaptation. So for some of the SDGs, uh, the local authorities and even at the national level, we need to convert them into the context that becomes relevant for us so that it meets the purpose of the indicator. So the answer is yes. Now for data gaps, that is where Pat was trying to refer to. So where there are data gaps, of course we need to have, we use some process to give us indication as to the, the, the subject of interest to know, to get some sense of what is happening in that area. Based on that, uh, 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 strategies and interventions are, are identified to address it. But going forward, the interesting thing happening now is that uh, now Ghana Statistical Service ha has ensured we have 
statistical office with all the planning or district assemblies that we have, to, which is 261. So going forward, we're hoping that for where, where you don't have the data, they will put in the mechanisms to collect primary data and based on that, they can, they can resolve that going forward. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, we are near the top of the hour. So what I would do is, can I have one representative from the Ghana team to say a last word to the audience and then I will wrap up. Anybody from the Ghana team? Yes, um, so this is, this is Nanao. Yes, come in, okay. please. <laughs> okay, so I just want to say that one of our critical lessons um, going forward has to do with partnerships. And these are partnerships both at the political level and also at the technical level. Um, without these partnerships, I'm not sure that Ghana would have been able to achieve the things it's, it's, it's been doing so far. So I think that going forward for any country that is seeking to do this, um, one of the critical things that you want to look at would have to do with um, partnerships, both at the political level and also at the technical level. Thank you. All right, thank you so much to the Ghana team for this wonderful presentation today, really engaging, really informative. We've heard a lot about the, the you know, often, oftentimes we hear about the whole society and whole of government approach. But today we really um, heard from the Ghana team how that works in practice. We've heard about partnerships um, early on and now again at the, at the end, the importance of partnerships, the importance of converging, convergence of between the national um, development agenda and the, and the SDGs. Um, we've heard a lot about um, creating synergies, the importance of stakeholders. In, you know, the, it's difficult and costly to involve everyone, but doing it in the best way that we can, um, including vulnerable groups like um, people with disabilities or including those that have a big stake in the future, like the young people, our youth. Um, we've heard, we really saw a practical example of, of finance. Um, we've heard about the importance of financial systems. And, I, and this, of course, in a country goes and everywhere goes really hand in hand, the planning and the financing, and then you know the high level political will and, and the high quality work that goes at the, at the technical level. So thank you very much to our Ghana team for, for your insights and reflections today. Thank you Mugisha for helping bring us together today. Um, finally, to everybody, if you haven't signed up for the IPPN, here's the information. Please join us in the next, um, the next Knowledge Cafe, Cafe, which will be sometime in April. And um, thank you to, to our participants, to our guests for joining us and to everybody who's working behind the scenes from, from the UNDP colleagues and the French translators. Um, massive appreciation to all of you. So I will end there. Um, see you again next month. Bye for now. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you, you Patient. Thank you, Fred. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. Thank you, Fred. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.